I picked Portland because I was born in San Jose, California, but I grew up in a small town outside of Portland, Oregon. Uh, San Jose, California, I was born in 1980, and it is a very diverse community. I think that it has been for a very, very, very long time, just about since anybody arrived. There's always been a very eclectic mix of people there. When we moved to Longview, Washington, which is very Pacific Northwest, like I said, just outside of Portland, Oregon, I was six. And I famously turned to my mom at one point during the day and I said, what happened to all the tan people? Because I didn't understand. Because suddenly I was in this very different demographic and my mom had to turn to me and say, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where all the tan people went. And then um, I was attending a day camp, this perfectly innocuous Christian day camp. My parents were very religious and uh, it was called Vacation Bible School, but it was just a summer, you know, day camp um, where you did activities with other kids at one of the churches in this small town during the summertime. Um, and I sat down in a church pew getting ready to sing one of the hymns and as you can see, and as those on the radio cannot, I am not a person of color in any way. Um, on my mom's side, really far back, there's some strain of um, Native American um, from the Ute tribe. And when I was born, actually, you couldn't tell my pupil from my iris at all. I've, I've barely ever had a sunburn in my whole life. So here I was moving from San Jose to this little lumber town um, where it rains, you know, every day. And I was not the same color as everybody else. So I sat down in this church pew and um, very quickly the kid next to me turned to me and said, ew, I don't want to sit next to a Japanese girl. And I knew on a number of levels, even when I was six, that that was deeply problematic. Um, one of all I'm not a person of color. I'm, I'm just, you know, your average Caucasian with some Native American from way back. Um, two of all, if I had been Japanese, I would have thought, wow, they have a really hard time hereabouts. And three of all, I was like, you little etc. <laughs> um, you know, of course, we were the same age, but I knew that this was really weird and I didn't know why. I didn't know why for the longest time. Um, I didn't know why actually until after I became a author of historical fiction and became very interested in the sort of, um, you know, ethnography of places and how those sort of cultures come about. Um, you know, why is San Jose like this? Why is Portland, Oregon like this? And uh, there was an article that was published, I think it was 2014 to 2015, something like that. Um, that went by the title, Oregon was founded as a racist utopia. And that's a startling title. I looked into it and I discovered a very, very large number of things about Oregon's history that were deeply, deeply troublesome. And I discovered that, you know, I, I thought, well, all of my books are in some way to do with people being other than other people and how do we get along how do we learn to relate to each other all of my books include people of color all of my books include queer people all of my books include people from this you know whole you know from from just the whole it's not really a melting pot but from the toss salad that is america <laughs> so um so i decided that i wanted to talk about it after i discovered that this history was actually really fraught 